Hi friends, welcome back. In this video, we are finishing up covering the drum kit with a very important set of microphones, the overheads. These include everything from the full kit mics to the cymbal mics to the hi-hat mic, the room mics, how they're positioned, picked, and processed. The overheads are an indisputable essential to miking the drum kit. Listen to the drums with no overheads and only the direct mics. Now have a listen with the overheads mixed in and hear how important they are to providing the full picture of the drum kit. Today we're looking at three things I do with the overheads to capture my drum kit in its truest form. The first is mic selection and why I choose the microphone I use when recording overheads. The second is mic placement, which is where the microphones are positioned physically in the room. The third is processing. This comes down to preamp selection, EQ, and compression. Let's start with mic selection. As a reminder, these opinions are based solely on my usage and my playing and the tracks that I record on. This is not some sort of blanket slash catch all statement. The reason I say this is because part of my mic selection is based on the symbols I use. I use all minor symbols and they do such a great job of staying out of the way of the rest of the instruments uh, in a track as well as the vocals. My job as a drummer is to complement and support the song and the rest of the instruments playing. So that's why my microphone selection is based off of my cymbal selection as well. So the best configuration of microphones I've found are the Mic Tech CV4s. These are beautiful mics. If you've ever heard an AKG C12, you'll find the same love, the same care, the same smoothness and attention to detail in a Mic Tech CV4. Now, it doesn't claim to be a C12 clone, but it may as well be its identical twin. These two mics are the bread and butter to my kit. While they accurately capture my cymbals, they also give space to the entire kit and really make you feel like you're in the room. Similarly, the Coles 4038s have the same effect, but in a darker and more personal sense. Because they're ribbon mics, they naturally taper off in the high end and smooth out the cymbals. And because they're bi-directional, they provide an even wider picture of the kit than just two regular condenser mics. So because of the inherent figure eight pattern of ribbon microphones and their inherent darkness, I also use an AEA R84 ribbon mic for my room mic. This keeps the cymbals from overtaking the mix when I start to layer in compression and fatten up the sound of the room. Finally, the hi-hat mic is an AKG 451 that rounds out the mix of the cymbals. This is more of a spot mic that I add in after I hear the full mix. I don't always start with it up, but if I need just a little bit more of it, I'll gradually add it in there. Let's turn to mic placement. Since I love more of an overhead kit sound and less of a cymbal sound, the main pair that I use for my overheads are the MicTech CV4s and an ORTF configuration. This configuration is essentially a reverse XY pair with a little bit larger of an angle at 110 degrees. I like this because it gives a nice stereo spread, uh, but it's not as wide as a spaced pair. It's also easier to keep in phase as they're right over the snare drum. So each mic is getting the same amount of snare in it. The coals are spaced out a little further and I have them over the cymbals instead of the whole kit. Because they're so dark, I like to just mix them in a hair and provide a little bit more body to the cymbals. Sometimes I don't even use them, uh, but I just provide them to a client as an option. Uh, they're ultra useful when approaching a song with like a really quiet touch, you know, if you're using tea towels or handkerchiefs or something, and they can be compressed and squashed and they still sound beautiful. The R84 
Room mic is placed out in front of the kit about six feet high. Um, it captures the room beautifully as it keeps the cymbals in balance while providing a beefiness to the drums. Um, I also hit this with a compressor up top uh, just to squash it and, and really fatten it up. The hi-hat is placed on the outside of the hats pointed at the edge and away from the snare drum to minimize bleed. So the AKG 451 on hi-hat is going through the Focusrite ISA with a little bit of low end rolled off and then going into the Midas 512 which provides a little bit of EQ help. Um, and again, with the 512, it's colorless, it's transparent, it sounds great. So here I'm doing some light cuts around 450 and 1K to smooth out the hat sound. The ORTF CV4s are going through the BAE 1073 preamps and then going to this dual channel Tone Lux EQ. The Tone Lux is really musical. I love how it gently adds color to the already warm tube mics. Um, so I'm usually, I'm just slightly carving out the boxiness of the kit with these EQs. The goal here is to have these mics sound good enough on their own, um, so that if I didn't have any other direct mics, I could still use them maybe with like a kick mic or something. So I'm cutting out some low mids around 250, some more boxiness around eight to 900, some of that eh, kind of at 2K, and then giving a gentle presence boost at 8K for some clarity. Then they're going through the Portico 5043 compressor, and it is my favorite compressor I've used to date. Here I'm shaving off probably a little bit more than four to six dB, but I try to keep it around there. It just depends on how heavy I'm hitting. This has a medium attack and a fast release. This allows the transients to peek through and then get ducked, get out of the way for the rest of the kit. The ratio here is at three to one. I like a gentle squash just because it can kind of elevate the whole kit sound um, and it'll really just keep some of those harsh transients from, from getting through. The spaced pair of Cole's 4038s are going through another set of the BAE 1073s and then they're going through Tone Lux EQ5Ps. They're essentially the same as the stereo Tone Lux EQ that the CV4s are going through, but it just gives it a nice gentle bit of color to the already dark tone. So I'm doing a little bit of a different EQ structure than the ORTFs by boosting some low end around 120 and cutting around 400 and then 4K. The top end I leave flat, but every now and again I might boost it a hair for some clarity, um, but it, it just depends on the track. Finally, the R84 room mic goes through the ISA as well, and then it gets squashed to hell with the DBX560. So this allows for kind of a faux expansion of the room by making it sound larger than it really is. Um, I love the pumpiness of this channel, and I just like to add it in slightly um, to kind of complement the rest of the microphones. So inside the box here in Pro Tools, there's really not much going on with uh, these channels in here. So uh, I have like some light EQ to roll off the highs of the R84 and then the amazing Sound Toys Devil Lock to add some more compression and a hair of crunch to the mic. Um, everything else is just kind of basic levels and some bus compression on all of the drum bus kind of stuff. But I wanna show you how I use the different sets of overheads based on the style of tune. So the first tune is kind of just a standard pop sounding song. Uh, it's actually a song that I made and it's downloadable on the Minel Symbols website for free. So check it out um, and you can play along with it. But uh, right now I want to solo my ORTF, the CV4, uh, microphone so you can hear what those sound like with their EQ and their compression. Yeah, so they sound great. Like, They've got enough compression in there that the toms really cut through uh, when that fill comes in. So I could really use them on their own with like a little bit of a kick drum mic mixed in with them. Let's have a listen to what these spaced uh, coals sound like.
Yeah, so they sound really good too, but they're just not made out for this style, uh, in my opinion. Um, when I show you the second tune, I'll show you how they really come in handy um, with that type of playing. The next microphone is the room microphone, and here I've got this devil lock on it, and <laughs> the sound toy stuff is is great, but it also like can go from like zero to a hundred really quickly. So on this, I've got the crunch at zero, which is still actually providing a little bit of distortion to it. And then I've got the crush, which is just like, you know, kind of one knob compression thing in here. And then I've got this 560 type of um EQ where I'm just cutting out some 2K-ish stuff and then a little bit of the high end. So here's that solo. Yeah, I love how that sounds. Um, I also forgot, here is the hi-hat. Um, this doesn't have any extra processing on it, but it does have that uh, Midas EQ engaged. So again, it's just more of a spot mic because it does have a little bit of the body taken out of it, but um, it, it sounds good. So... Yeah, other than the uh, drum compression with this, um, this is more of like a SSL kind of G-Bus compressor, uh, decapitator on the parallel bus. Um, I'm actually trying this Elysia stuff. I, I don't know what it is, but it sounds, sounds pretty cool and it's got a good squash factor to it. And then, of course, my uh, embarrassing thing of the CLA mix down, but whatever. I like it. It sounds good. Um, so let's scoot on over to the other song, which is a... It's, it's, it's more of the lighter touch. It's uh, the darker tones. So here's where the, where the coals can really shine in this environment. So when they were just on their own, I really wasn't digging some of this frequency. It's just a little too heavy, so I ended up cutting some of that out, and then I added some compression to it. And then what I did on, these, on this darker sounding track, I actually took um, some stereo tape um, emulation from Waves, this J37, and just kind of messed with some of these settings, added some noise and then some saturation, and it darkened it up. And then on top of that, added the Sound Toys uh, Devil Lock and just mixed it in a hair to add some... Uh, some darkness to it, and then I set these at zero because they're still engaged even though they're at zero, and I think it really does something cool. So here it is without these engaged. And then when you add them in, They just add a nice retro retro feel uh, to the drum kit. So, 
you know, overall, the overheads are crucial to the mix because they fill in the gaps where all the direct mics missed. And they're the mics that make you feel like you're in the room with the drums. Um, if you wanted super tight drums with, you know, no personality, no character, then you could easily program them with, with MIDI drums. But the hardest thing to capture is the spirit of the kit which is why one can never diminish the value of the overheads. So as always, I wanna thank you for stopping by. Um, I do hope that you learned something. Don't forget to drop a comment below and to like and subscribe so I can keep making more content just like this video for you. I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll see you in the next video.